Today, I'm joined by host of the top rated Entrepreneurs on Fire. He has over 1 million monthly downloads and seven figure annual revenue off the back of his podcast. John Lee Dubas, welcome to the show. Mark, I am fired up to be here, brother. Thanks for having me. Me too. Thank you for joining me. So let me start. We're in a very crowded space now. A lot of people are getting into podcasting. What separates an average podcast from an excellent podcast? How can we stand out? First off, an average podcast may as well be a horrible podcast because <laughs> if you're average these days, like you're not going to generate an audience. You're not going to create a podcast that is meaningful just because it is a saturated marketplace. But if you want to make your dent in the world, to have an impact, to share that voice and that message and that mission with the world, you've got to create a podcast that solves a specific problem, that provides a real solution to an actual struggle. You've heard it before, the riches are in the niches. It is not different for podcasting. Like launching another podcast to interview entrepreneurs, it's not gonna work. But if you launch a podcast that is specifically to serve vegans who at the same time love yoga, the yogi vegan is going to work because you are going to find your tribe. You are going to be able to fill a void that's not currently uh, being filled in the podcast market space. So that's what's going to separate an average podcast, which will fail from a great podcast that will win. I love that niching down, getting to know your customer, getting to know your client, getting to know the people that really love what you do. So let me kind of dive into that a little bit, John. How do we convert just an average listener, maybe it's the first time on the show, into a super fan, into part of the fire nation or part of something that, that really is meaningful for their life? You change their life. Like you are mm. literally adding value to their life by providing them a solution to an actual problem they have. I mean, Mark, if I was to ask you a question right now and you're like, John, like I am so struggling with creating a funnel that can actually convert, you know, so I can actually make money in my business. Like I'm working hard. Like look at this, you know, painting behind me of my palm trees. Like this isn't free. Like I've actually got, you know, bills coming in. I've got a family to support. Help me create a funnel. And then I go, well, listen, Mark, I've got a completely free funnel course. It's eight videos. It's going to take you through a process of how to create your first converting funnel. And it's, it's free. It's called funnel on fire. Here you go, my friend. And then if I give that to you, it's free. And then that works for you. Like, do you not think that you will become that raving fan that you just mentioned? That's where the gold is. I love that. So kind of providing just as much value up front as possible. So people are like, ah, John's giving me all this stuff for free. What can I get in the mastermind course or in his special community? I think that's that makes a lot of sense. And that's something that Gary Vee's a big fan of giving away your best stuff for free because people will just get hungry and hungry for more. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. So you've obviously had a long journey, been podcasting for many years, J JLD. What was that aha moment for you? What was it? What was the time in your history where you just said, this is, this is it. This is the aha moment that's really made the difference in your business. It was launching the podcast. I mean, it was literally walking down the street, listening to a podcast, being like, you know what? These episodes are so good when people are interviewing entrepreneurs about their successes and their failures. Like, I'm learning so much. I'm going to go home right now and I'm going to find that daily podcast that comes out seven days a week with a new episode, with a new interview, with a successful and inspiring entrepreneur because that's the show that I need right now in my life. And Mark, I went back to find that show. It did not exist. And then I remembered that great quote by Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world. Like I wanted that show to exist. It didn't exist. I filled that void. Now, was I good? No. Did I think I was going to be good? No. But I was doing a daily show. I was putting in the reps seven days a week. So I got better fairly quickly. But at the end of the day, like, the reason why Entrepreneurs on Fire won is because I found a niche that wasn't being served. I filled a void that had not yet been filled. If I just launched a seven day a week show, sorry, a once a week show, like other podcasts that were already out there in the space, I would have struggled. I probably never would have gained traction. And that was back in 2012 when there wasn't even that many shows around. So you can see why right now it's even more critical than ever to really identify one problem that your podcast is going to solve. That makes that makes a lot of sense. And it's, it's cer certainly very difficult to do. I think it's really easy to caught up in that. Well, someone's already done it. Someone's, it's already been done. But I think that it's, it's just really important that you, you dig in, right? You dig in, you start finding and, and listening 
to the people in your community, which, which honestly is a little bit of a challenge, I think, in podcasting, right? Because you, you post a podcast and most of the platforms don't give you a lot of feedback back, right? It's not like on YouTube where you post a video and then there's a, a ton of comments. How do you get that feedback from your community, John? Engagement is not easy in the podcasting world. It takes time to build an audience to a size where you actually are getting feedback, where you actually are getting comments. It's yeah. tough, but I love the quote that the higher the barrier, the lower the competition. And if you really realize that, you'll realize that, hey, it is tough to build an audience to a level where I'm actually getting engagement, but it's tough for everybody. And so most people are going to give up. And, and since I'm not going to give up and I'm going to get over that barrier, I'm going to win at my level. And so that's a really important and critical thing to realize. And then I can just say, you have to be asking for the engagement. You have to be giving a reason for people to engage. Like a huge you know, piece of advice that I give people, because it's a huge mistake a lot of podcasters make, is they say something along the lines of, all right, if you get a chance, go back to my um, uh, website because I have a newsletter. You can sign up for my newsletter, blah, blah, blah. Like who's going to sign up for a newsletter just for the sake of a newsletter? Like yeah. who needs more emails in their inbox? Like nobody's raising their hand right now. What people need are solutions to their problems. So your call to action at the end of your show should be a incredibly valuable and specific call to action that's going to be solving a real problem. Like for instance, one of my calls to action and I have eight that I rotate on my show is Hey, listen, I've done over 2,600 interviews. I know that most entrepreneurs struggle accomplishing goals. So I created a completely free goals course for you. Freegoalscourse.co. Go check it out. I will teach you how to set and accomplish a goal with this free course. Go check it out. Freegoalscourse.co. So I'm giving them an actual reason to go to sign up for this course. And guess what? Now they're in my e now, now they're on my email list. They're part of my subscribers. They're getting more value, more content from me. And I'm able to ask them questions in my email sequence. Like, what is your biggest struggle right now? So in that way, now I'm engaging with them because I'm asking them a direct question. They're giving me a direct answer on their struggles. And I'm able to really start the engagement in that way. But with just these kind of vague, broad, and not very specific calls to action, people are really struggling. Yeah, and I think one of the smart things you can you can do with that, if you're, so let's say, like you said, you've got eight different calls to action for your various shows. If someone's like, okay, this is the call to action, I'm gonna sign up for that list. Well, now you have a more specific, you, you can understand more specifically what their need is, right? So now you can cater your emails and your targeting and your messaging because you understand what their interest is right? You can understand what their problem that they need solved is, right? So somebody that gets on that email list is going to be getting emails specific to goals. Somebody that gets yeah. on my free podcast course list is going to be getting emails specific to podcasting. Like you have to customize and segment things out to speak to that individual's specific struggles. Like that's the core, that's the key. And you can do it with the tools that we have these days. It just takes a little forethought, a little effort. Once the systems are in place, they're in place. So let's, let's lean into that a little bit more, John you systems, right? Because obviously 